Hello YouTube, and uh, it's your boy Coast. Back to bless you guys again with another Star Wars video. Um, and uh, more bad news for Disney, man. I mean, they didn't listen. They didn't listen when we told them. And now it's coming back to bite them in the ass. Okay, so uh, let me just share this with you. Um, on the Facebook page, New Republic Historical Office. <clears throat> so Disney's quarterly report has come out, and it's not looking very good. Sales of Star Wars merchandise are way down. I just want to read this for you. They said, oh, all the shills, they said, oh, the big ship will never sink. Oh, yes. Uh, Rise of Skywalker is going to be a success. Galaxy's Edge is, is doing great. Everything's just fine. All these propaganda running shills. Uh, what's her name? Admirable Andrea. The people that will ban you for criticizing Brie Larson and, uh, and freaking uh, Daisy Ridley. The people that have been lying to everyone about the state of this franchise. I know they're good. I know they're, they're probably crying right now or whatever, or trying to figure out some way to deceive us or uh, some way to, to cover this up and make it not look so bad. <laughs> Sales of Disney Star Wars merchandise are way down. Wow. It's almost like we told you guys this. Also, Galaxy's Edge, the Star Wars land attraction at Disneyland, is having attendance well below expectations. When you combine that with solo underperforming, it, it is certainly signs it is certainly a sign that f sorry, not a fan of correct incorrect English. It's certainly a sign that fans aren't ravenously devouring Star Wars, Disney Star Wars. Excuses offered by Disney for why their Star Wars theme park within Disneyland have been failing uh, has have been various. From Bob, that sentence doesn't make any sense. But anyway, from Bob Eager, CEO of Disney, saying people are staying away because they are afraid it will be too crowded. To Matt Martin, member of the story group, saying on Twitter that the talk of Galaxy's Edge being a flop is anti-Disney bias in the media. Wow. <sighs> Disney complaining about anti-Disney bias in the media. Okay. Okay, when basically every media outlet has been smearing Star Wars fans as what uh, outright baby man, um, oh because they don't like the new movies or whatever. Uh, but there's anti Disney bias in the media, guys. We're supposed to believe this. Okay, um, let's think about why their highly promoted, very expensive Star Wars theme park isn't succeeding. If you told me a decade ago there was a Star Wars theme park where you would get to walk around a planet from Star Wars, go on Star Wars rides where it feels like you're flying a starship, build your own lightsaber, etc., you couldn't keep me away from it. So why aren't I packing my bags for Disneyland? <sighs> Well, first, it's set entirely in the Disney Star Wars sequels. <laughs> the setting for it, and you wonder why it's failing. The setting for it is a planet that didn't even exist in Star Wars lore until last year, when it was first mentioned in one of the reboot novels. You aren't visiting an iconic planet of Star Wars. You're visiting a planet that wasn't even a part of Star Wars until last year. The attraction has a single ride and consists mostly of gift shops and a cantina. I realize I have no reason to go. Across the entire breadth of Star Wars from 42 years of Star Wars lore, most of which they erased when they when they bought it out. Of course, it's, it's now Legends. <laughs> and that's why we say Legends never die. The place is entirely immersed in the Disney sequels. 
It's a couple of rides and a lot of very expensive gift shops. Would you pay the huge cost of Disney vacation, airfare, hotels, tickets, easily making the trip cost thousands of dollars to go on one ride and then shop at some gift shops? Also, there are many anecdotal reports on Twitter that the expensive $200 lightsabers that can be built by visitors there tend to break down or malfunction, with some not even making it out of the park before failing, others breaking days or weeks later. Wow. They could have, by comparison, set the Star Wars attraction in a more iconic, well-known part of the Star Wars galaxy like Tatooine. I think the reason they didn't was that Tatooine hasn't appeared in the sequel movies, so they didn't want to remind fans about the pre-Disney Star Wars. They do seem to not want to remind fans that Star Wars existed before Disney bought it. Exactly. It's like Disney hates their own fans. It, it, well, it, it's their fans now. It's, it's like they hate Star Wars fans. You know? And Lucas, you know, God bless him, you know, he never expressed this contempt for uh, for his own fans. And but we express, well, not not me, but like the people who were uh, who hated on the prequels expressed so much contempt contempt for him. It, it was it was just like almost expected that he was gonna that he was gonna sell it, you know by some people. I mean, for me, it was like, nah, he's not going to sell it. But like, then it was just like, when he did, it was just like, well, now we, we know um, who's to blame. And it's all the people that kept on bitching and whining about the sequel, um, about, about the prequels, which really aren't that bad. People are realizing in retrospect that the prequels were not that bad. And I never saw them as bad because I grew, I grew up with them and to me, the like I I saw the um, the originals before the sequels even came out. I, I'm sorry, before the prequels even came out, and um, I was anticipating the prequels when back in like when I was a little kid, like ninety ninety eight or so. Yeah, you know, and I was just like, oh man, I was such a nerd when I was a kid, and I was just like, oh man, I can't wait to see like how Darth Vader came up when he was a kid and I couldn't wait to see the evolution of of his character because I knew that that was just the natural part of the story that he always meant to tell of Anakin Skywalker you know and and from the Star Wars EU novels we knew that the next natural logical progression in the story would be the resurrection of the Jedi Order in the sequels 7 8 and 9 but you guys blew it. You guys blew that chance when you guys kept whining so much about, oh, there's so much CGI and George Lucas can't do his own film right. Like, it's it's his vision, you know, and if that's what he wanted to do, then so be it. I mean, like, I'm sure he would have had some, some new ideas to explore in, in his own version of the sequels. But let's take a look at this article that he links here. I don't want to get too off topic. Disneyland Star Fox Business is saying this. Disneyland Star Wars flops. Now employees getting cut hours cut. Mike Cherico. Dang, August 9th, 2019. Wow. This was the force is not strong at Disneyland this summer. Jeez. And employees are feeling the pinch. Wow. It's almost like no one likes the sequel trilogy. It's almost like what the shills are trying to make you believe isn't real. Remember that shill I showed you in the la in the other video? Trying to convince everyone that the the last Jedi didn't tank Star Wars? <laughs> trying to who was he trying to convince with that? Anyway. Wait times this summer for the new Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run ride were expected to be over two hours long all summer, but in reality, the lines have been averaging half of that or less. An employee who spoke under the condition of anonymity says Fox Business. As a result, the company has been forced to cut hours. The need for us to work simply isn't there. <laughs> Man. 
employees are now working under 40 hours per week. Our hours have been cut as low as 30 to 35 hours some weeks, in, even though we have both worked for the park for, the, for years. It makes life challenging when your paychecks get cut unexpectedly. Wow, a worker can earn around 15 bucks an hour. The reduced work week means a paycheck before taxes could fall from 600 to 450. Jeez, it's almost like they should have listened to the fans, you know? It's almost like the problem is them and they need to look in the mirror and say, hmm, maybe I'm the one who screwed up, <laughs> instead of just blaming the fans for everything. Some people stayed away just because they expected that it would not be a great guest experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Bob. Disney CEO Bob Eager said on a recent earnings call, now, Bob Eager is going to try and, like, make it seem like, oh, well, it's no big deal. Like, the big ship won't sink. And um, <laughs> it's it's kind of tanking. Yeah, because he, he doesn't want his investors to get scared, I guess. The second attraction in Anaheim will open in January. Media analyst Porter Bibb of Media... What kind of a name is that? Of Media Tech Capital... Partners explains why the new Star Wars land may be struggling to pull in big numbers in its opening fiscal quarter. It experienced some malfunctions due to complex... Yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, part, of, part of the problem, too, has been all the hype surrounding the new Star Wars land. Uh, tourists fear the anticipated crowds. Locals seem to be waiting out the summer crowds, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Full-time cast members know that they are regularly scheduled between 30 to 40 hours per week and that their schedules vary depending on a number of factors. Right. Anyway, guys, it's just ironic to me. Um, <laughs> all of these shills out there, uh, Admirable Andrea, um, Dr. Ragnarok, all these certified Disney shills uh, are out here preaching that everything is good when uh, behind the scenes, Bob Eager is nervously sweating. <laughs> Praying to God that the rise of Skywalker does something to boost this franchise. Uh, they even they even brought back the Obi-Wan Obi film the from the dead. They resurrected that shit. <laughs> because Disney Kid is so bad. They resurrected it because uh, they know that, that Disney canon is their original, their quote unquote original characters are trash. Um, matter of fact, I just saw in one of these Facebook groups that uh, Jason Solo, <laughs> um, <laughs> that Kylo Ren uh, is is nothing but the Dollar General version of Jason Solo, <laughs> which is a fact. He's a he's a dollar he's a Dollar Tree uh, version, uh, great value version of uh, Jason Solo and uh, <laughs> and Darth Revan fused together. This is what happens when you get rid of thirty years of established canon uh, and try to start over again in in like two years and expect the same success it's not gonna happen you should have just gone with what you had uh should have just gone with the established canon that was already there that the fans had known and loved for 30 plus years uh and continued on with that but of course disney they can't do that uh and the characters that they do come up with are um mockeries of eu characters uh or eu characters seen through an sjw lens uh or they're just straight up feminist uh or uh they're straight up feminist self in inserts they're uh what every feminist would like to be like admirable uh sorry admiral Haldo and uh Ray, the unkillable Mary Sue, the uh <laughs> all powerful, flawless character uh that Disney introduces to uh 
I guess, to empower all women. Um, they've made, uh, they've killed off all of your favorite original characters. Uh, they've mocked all of your original characters. They, they mock um, heroism. And they want their franchise to succeed. I don't know, guys, but it looks like the Phantom Menace wins again, and uh, I think I think I can hear the the voices of the shills somewhere in the distance as they become ever saltier. <laughs> anyway, um, it's your boy Coast. Uh, I just thought I would share that with you guys. It's just it's just funny to see uh, the to just see all the shills get proven wrong once again and hit in the face with reality uh it's your boy coast peace